The following program is classified G. It's suitable for all ages. We would like to remind our viewers that the views expressed in this program by our participating guests are solely viewpoints of them who take part and does not reflect the views and beliefs of the Verena Media Network. This is an opinion-based program. On an all-new Get Real, India security and the port city, with Sri Lanka aiming to US economic prosperity at these trying times, the Sri Lankan state-owned project, the Colombo Port City, seems to be a vibrant beacon of the promise to the people. In fact, President Gotabi Rajapaksa's whispers of prosperity gave an assurance to the Sri Lankan people that economic renaissance is going to be a vital part of the president's legacy. With COVID-19 hammering the country in various ways, this beacon of hope seems to be more important than ever before. However, throwing shade at our hopes is Big Brother India. Instead of seeing the economic benefits these types of projects can bring to Sri Lanka, India cries foul over bogus security concerns. Will this project go tits up thanks to India's nagging? Or can this government address concerns and get India on board and part of the project? For insights and analysis tonight, I'm honored to welcome back Foreign Secretary and a very good friend of the show, Admiral Professor Janav Kulamadi. From Studio 24, with opinions that matter, it's time to get real with Mahesh Jani. And a happy Monday evening to all. Thank you for taking the time to join me on yet another episode of Get Real, where we continue to discuss issues faced by everyday Sri Lankans. Tonight, we are revisiting a topic I've discussed on this program many times. India. This time around, they come back putting a dent on our possible growth. <laughs> Well, in my opening statement, a nagging big brother for a neighbor. Tonight, we begin with a history lesson. Now, in the second term of then President Mahindra Rajpaksa, Sri Lanka was looking at the whole world to come help us to grow out from a war ravaged economy to a prosperous one. As soon after 2009, we were hoping countries like India, the United States, uh, UK, Europe, who equally helped us to stop the war, would come bearing gifts to this nation who's trying to get up. Instead of flower bouquets or praises for our soldiers, our government, our leaders who ended a bloodbath of over 30 years, the so-called Friends of Sri Lanka, the bunch that I listed out before, brought us the cancellation of GSP+, trapped us up on a bogus human rights BS that to this date have failed to be proven and stifled our growth as a, as a nation. When this happened, we've looked to our real friends, so we thought, like India, who claims to be the big brother in the region, especially the Sark region, and then also countries like China. Now, one shunned us, and the other embraced us. You can figure out as to who is who. If you research a bit as to the relationship Sri Lanka has had with India, since Prince Vijay landed on the shoes of this nation, what India has done is to throttle our neck to the level we are paralyzed, but not dead. So they can keep dominating as to what happens here in this country. The recent best example is how India left us out to dry at the UNHRC when we were actively seeking India's support and also even though I very much understand as to why this happened, the vaccination issue with AstraZeneca shots uh, coming from the Serum Institute. The fate of over 250,000 people in Sri Lanka in this country hanged in the balance as India failed to deliver on a promise. Now once again, this big brother of ours, like the one you can't get rid of, is nagging again like a little baby. Why? Port City. What about Port City? Oh no, Chinese build-up. 
These concerns were highlighted recently when Indian Vice Admiral G. Ashok Kumar, Vice Chief of India's Naval Staff, told Asia News International on the 17th of June that China-funded Colombo uh, Port City Project in Sri Lanka could pose a threat to Indian interests in the region. Consider that, Indian interests in the region. Not Sri Lanka's interest, Indian, India's interest. Remarks such as these by top Indian officials are an open expression of New Delhi's hostility towards Colombo's growing relationship with China. The Indian government's anger has particularly increased since President Gotabe Rajapaksa's administration pushed through Parliament its amended Economic Commission Bill for the Port City Project, now an act, which establishes a special economic zone at the Port City development. Why is China doing this in Sri Lanka? Why are they investing here? Well, that's because the Colombo Port City project and several other key projects are a key component of Beijing's Belt and Road Initiative, a strategic plan to ensure the free movement of imports and exports across the Indian Ocean and Central Asia to counteract US-led efforts to encircle China. Now, addressing last week's uh, online Asia and Pacific high-level conference on Belt and Road Cooperation, Foreign Minister Dinesh Gunamaradana called on all participants to take advantage of the opportunities available here in Sri Lanka for investment. He specifically referred to Colombo Port City and the Hamadara Port Infrastructure Projects, which are funded by China, of course. New Delhi arrogantly regards smaller countries in South Asia as part of its backyard and insists that their administration should operate accordingly. When India voices its concerns over China's relations with Sri Lanka, however, it is not just speaking for itself, but also on behalf of the United States. Under Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Indian Prime Minister, India has become a frontline state in the US war plans against China, which are now being intensified under the new Biden administration. Comments by senior Indian military and government officials about maritime security are in line with hypocritical US claims that China's naval movements in the region are a threat to freedom of navigation. These comments make clear that New Delhi, as well as Washington, will be stepping up their moves to undermine and scuttle our relations with Beijing. And if you're thinking, oh no, this is a plan that they hatched very recently. Make no mistake, this is history repeating itself again. When President Mahindra Rajapaksa refused to bow down to Western pressures back when he was in power and still continue to work with China, the United States brought a series of resolutions to, at the UN Human Rights Council, hypocritically seizing on bloody war crimes committed by then President Mahindra Rajapaksa's administration during the final weeks of the war against the ruthless, now obliterated by our heroic armed forces, the useless LTTE. The resolution had nothing to do with defending human rights, but were to pressure President Mahindra Rajapaksa to distance his administration from Beijing. We all know that when the, all those efforts fail to get President uh, Mahindra Rajapaksa to shy away from China, Washington, with the assistance of the Delhi, orchestrated a regime change operation in the 2015 presidential election, installing the clown of all presidents. Maitri Balasi Rizena to power. The international pressure now being directed against President Gotabe Rajapaksa's government is being orchestrated by the new Biden administration as well, which has intensified its aggressive military preparations targeting China. Now, if India's concerns are really about the maritime security of the region, then why not talk about it at all the forums Sri Lanka, India and many other countries in the region are part of? SARC is established exactly for that. Now the biggest joke is that while India is trying to stifle us in growing economically, India meanwhile has increased its trade with China over 70% this year alone in 2021 to $48.16 billion. You can see the hypocrisy here, right? It's not that they are concerned about maritime security. They're more concerned that if Sri Lanka is allowed to grow economically, 
that we will definitely be a threat to India's economy. That's the truth. Because they know we will definitely do a way better job than the Indians. Now, this government, the government of President Gotabe Rajpaksa, from time and time after has assured India and Prime Minister Narendra Modi, personally by the President himself, that India's security concerns are of paramount importance to this country and that President Gotabe Rajpaksa's administration will never go against it. Sri Lanka has given its word, unlike to the Indians when they give their word like they will provide AstraZeneca shots to South Asia and then push comes to shove, fail on delivering their promise. Well, we the Sri Lankan people, when we give our word, it means something. All right, a lot more to talk about uh, Sri Lanka's growth uh, throughout the Port City project as economic uh, conditions are becoming tougher in the country. We need to uh, look at avenues that would get us out from this state and foreign relations plays a pivotal part. And that's why Foreign Secretary Admiral Professor Janath Kolamagay will be here shortly. But before that, standing by is Tanidu with Anamasam with tonight's real story on whether these concerns of India carries any weight. Tanidu, good evening. Good evening, Mahesh. The government of Sri Lanka has made a firm commitment to rebuild its fallen economy by supporting domestic enterprises, a move that has brought much hope to the local businesses within the country, but has also dragged a lot of attention from foreign powers. Earlier this year, India reportedly expressed concern after China's Sinosa Etekwin joint venture won a bid to install hybrid renewable energy systems in several islands north of Sri Lanka's main island and close to India. This has been one of many occasions where India has scrutinized Sri Lanka's advances in investment, specifically with China. Sri Lanka has had a turbulent relationship with India, which has taken many positive turns with the election of President Gotabe Rajapaksha. This is primarily due to the India First policy undertaken by the government. This has not corresponded with the Sri Lanka First strategy by the Indian government. In this backdrop, India famously abstained from voting on the UNHRC resolution against Sri Lanka. Among 14 countries that abstained were Japan, Indonesia, Bahrain, and Nepal. Among the 11 that voted against were China, Cuba, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Russia, and Venezuela. Among the 22 that voted for were UK, France, Italy, Denmark, Netherlands, Austria, Mexico, Argentina, Brazil, and Uruguay. Another key region of contention was the Trincomalee oil tank farm, which the current government is in negotiations to reacquire. The development of the upper oil tank farm in Trincomalee was initially signed by the previous government with a memorandum of understanding on cooperation on economic projects in order to set up a joint venture between the LIOC and the CPC. In the midst of the contentious relationship growing, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi has promised the Jaffna Cultural Association that he will visit Jaffna soon. China Harbour Engineering Company has led several infrastructure projects in Sri Lanka, including Hambantota Port and Matala International Airport, and is currently constructing the 1.4 billion US dollar Colombo Port City. The Colombo Port City is largely, predominantly, a Chinese investment. 1.4 billion US dollars. Now, the Chinese would want to get something out of it as well. And this is where Indian concerns about the possibility of this being used for military and strategic purposes comes in. We have to be very, very wary and diligent, vigilant in fact, to ensure that the port city is functioning and is used for the purposes that it was meant for, and that it is not used for any military or strategic purposes. We have to be very clear with the Chinese government that that is the case, or else we are going to imperial our foreign policy positions. I'm not saying that we should be dependent on India or that we should um, be a vassal state or satellite state of India, not at all. You have to uh, defend your sovereignty vis-a-vis -vis your neighbor, but you must also be mindful of the neighbor's legitimate apprehensions, and even those apprehensions are not so legitimate, one has to be mindful of them because we are neighbors and we are a small state on the doorstep of a very large one. Since India is uh, justifiably sensitive to uh, the expansion of Chinese influence on its northern tier, it is bound to be extra sensitive about Chinese influence on its southern tier in the Indian Ocean region. Port City is not perceived by the United States 
um, and India as a level playing field. The Cabinet has cleared the West Container Terminal of the Colombo Port to be developed as a 35-year joint venture with India's Adani Group and its local partner John Keels Holdings PLC, as well as with investment from Japan. India is now banking on the West Container Terminal being developed by the Adani Group to make its strategic presence felt. The SARC has been a core point of importance in rebuilding regional ties and has been re-emphasized by the current administration. The Chinese are investing in Sri Lanka. The Indians are investing in Sri Lanka. Now, just as a policy, the Chinese have invested almost $30 billion into the in, in the Indian economy. Likewise, the exports from India to China was roughly in the range of about uh, $32 billion US dollars in 2019. And in 2020, it was about $35 billion. Likewise, China exported into India about $68 billion in 2021. It's almost 11% or 14% of the total imports of India. So I guess these accusations come not from these officials, the others talk and put this in wrong this thing. All I could basically say is that we have got to trade, trade and trade. We must not aid ourselves, but trade ourselves. This comes in the midst of the G7 response to the Belt and Road Initiative titled Build Back Better World Initiative. The new initiative announced this month at the G7 summit in Cornwall, England, promises sustainable and value-driven infrastructure investment to the tune of, quote, hundreds of billions of dollars in low- and middle-income countries in the coming years. The program will help narrow a 40 trillion US dollars needed for infrastructure projects across the developing world. This context makes it pertinent that Sri Lanka is clear with its foreign policy in the future, especially given that China has been a very supportive partner nation. Sri Lanka has been consistent with its non-aligned policy. But recently, questions have been raised as to whether that policy is sustainable. Over to you, Mahesh. All right, Danny Vithanavasam reporting there with the real story. Thank you very much. Also, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Vithanavasam has a new show on Other Therana, Law, Land and Liberty, which is going to be the destination for law-related matters in Sri Lanka. If you want to learn about our law, our country's law, watch Danny Do's new show, Law, Land and Liberty, airing every Saturday at 7 p.m. right here on Other Therana 24. All right, we're going to take a short commercial break. After the break, Foreign Secretary Admiral Professor Janat Columbia is here. Be right back. This is Get Real. real time now to get some context into the conversation we're having. Well, we're tonight discussing India, uh, another neighbor uh, who seems to be crying again uh, because of the fact that apparently um, focusing on security concerns. We, uh, like I explained before uh, in my opening statement, it is more or less an economic situation, but then they are putting the security face in front and making uh, these kinds of uh, bogus claims and trying to say that Sri Lanka should uh, move away from China, maybe come to India. We can if they actually support us the same way China is supporting. Anyhow, uh, Foreign Secretary Admiral uh, Professor Jayanath Kulamage is back. Uh, Good to see you, sir. Um, how are things? Uh, Good to <laughs> see you. Kobe uh, is not exactly uh, helping us. It's it, 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 it's like the the gum that has stuck on your boot. It's not going to go away. What's uh, how's the situation? So well, I think we the whole world is waiting uh, for this term post-COVID world. Yeah. But unfortunately, it is an elusive world. Uh, but I guess with the vaccinations rolling on. And with uh, us taking precautions the way we are doing now, I'm hopeful that uh, in a short while we should be able to get back to somewhat normalcy. But then you see the situation is not only Sri Lanka should yeah. get better, it Can should be the whole world and the whole region should get better at the same time. Otherwise, we'll have problems. So, But we are hopeful, I think... Uh, uh, let's uh, face I, this. I want to get uh, deeper into that discussion later on in the program, but uh, uh, the, the topic we are discussing tonight, uh, Admiral, is India, our big <coughs> northern uh, brother, uh, so to speak. 
uh, not happy again, <laughs> saying that uh, security concerns are one of the things that would arise due to the port city. Uh, it, it has not uh, been communicated or, or been stated, I, I need to say uh, categorically, by Prime Minister Narendra Modi or any, anybody in the government. But, but the hierarchy in the military uh, has been saying, uh, raising this concern about uh, the Chinese build-ups in, in, into the southern tip of their nation, uh, mainly in Sri Lanka. So they're concerned. So India, at the end of the day, this government, you all have decided it's an India first policy. That is how you're going to streamline your foreign policy. You've been stating this all throughout. Has that changed? Well, uh, to begin with, uh, I think you mentioned the word uh, Chinese project uh, in the yeah, southern part not. of the country. I think conceptually yeah, that is yeah. wrong. These are not Chinese projects. These are Sri Lankan, Sri Lankan projects. 100% owned and operated by Sri Lanka. Only thing is the contractor, the builder, as, of, as in the, the case of the port city, is a Chinese company. So I think once we get that clear, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think many of these issues uh, can be uh, sorted out. And then, of course, uh, what choices do we have? Now we have uh, a, a, a reclaimed land area of 269 hectares. Mm. So what should we do about this land that is already available for us? So we have no choice but to make it happen. And you mentioned that uh, India has not officially protested or anything like it, this. But I think it's uh, hugely dramatized uh, and sensitized in especially some of the media and also I have uh, heard this in some of the think tank discussions in India. Oh, uh, there is going to be a Chinese colony in Colombo. But this is not a Chinese colony. This is pretty much uh, part of Sri Lanka land, part of Sri Lanka sovereignty, part of Sri Lanka territory. And so there should not be unnecessary undue fears about it. On the contrary, I think what we really wish is that anyone can come and invest in it be part coming. of it. That's it. <laughs> so be there. But but uh, have I, I know there are conversations back and forth uh, with with uh, your ministry, the uh, Indian High Commissioner here in Sri Lanka, uh, trying to figure out how best we can approach and address the issues uh, pertaining to uh, the concerns that they are raising. Now, what they're saying is security, because a Chinese build-up or, or let's say a Chinese presence, mm -hmm. a larger Chinese presence than than what it used to be, what that's what they foresee with the pro project coming in, uh, would be detrimental to their security because you know from from one side they are uh, taking care of Pakistan there is a war mm -hmm. active war on the other side again China a little bit of clashes we've seen in the past even recent months mm -hmm. there have been clashes uh, on, on the border between China and India mm -hmm. now if there is another Chinese build up in the south obviously anybody is concerned so what have you all done in order to address that security concern um, to India and say you know there's nothing, I mean, we are very open about this. There's nothing to be cautious about at this point. Well, I mean, to come back to the same statement that I made, this is not a Chinese project. And by having this project going into full swing, I don't think we are going to see more Chinese presence here. Why do you say that? Why I say, because now take the case of uh, Colombo International Container Terminal, which is uh, operated by China Merchant Port Holding, nearly 90% of the workers or the employees are Sri Lankans. Only very few Chinese people are working in it. Now take the case of Hambantota Port. Again, the largest number of port employees are Sri Lankans. right? So similarly, once this project goes to full swing, it will be multiple investment coming from different countries. Right? So there won't be an added, added Chinese presence in the port city. So that is, I think, one factor that I think we must be very consciously mm. clear about. Right? Then, of course, this uh, interpolation, you know, uh, it has happened somewhere, so therefore it will happen here. Well, we do this quite often in uh, international relations, but that's a very dangerous thing. Because we just cannot compare what we have here in Colombo to anywhere else. So this is our own project, this is our own commitment, and this is our future. I think Sri Lanka has a good opportunity now uh, to create a, a city for the future, a smart city for the future. 
it's going to be very tough with covid um, well despite the covid i think this is the best time to do construction and do things right now because things are slowed down so this is the time i think we should be ready uh, uh, to face the reality after the covid is over i mean if we wait until the covid is over mm. then what you know once the covid is behind us then everybody will be on a mad rush so this is the best time to do construction develop your infrastructure get things right get uh, the 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 acts and acts pass commission set up this is the best time to do that i think mahesh i i, I very well understand that uh, mm. the port city project per se is not it doesn't come under your purview uh, it, it's a, it's a separate project uh, handled by a separate ministry but then you all have a component uh, because you you all are very much in integral in selling this concept to the mm-hmm. world uh, whenever you're talking trade talks or when you're having bilateral discussions with various countries uh, you this is going to be a big chunk in your conversation uh, we've heard about the indian factor we've heard about the chinese factor what are the other countries that you're actively engaging hoping to get some kind of a presence some kind of investment uh, to sri lanka to port city and get this project started because we don't want to see a patch of and that's a beach or oh, what we need to see is development well mahesh this patch of land which is approximately 269 hectares has a beach and that's the common yeah. area uh, and that's about 99 uh, hectares quite a big uh, common area but in addition to that it has a financial district it has a international island uh, then local island and a green park so it is a multiple uh, combination of multiple factors so you are right as the foreign ministry because our focus is much much more on economic mm. diplomacy as of now because that's something we really need going so we are trying our best to promote uh, investment for the port city uh, and and while when when we do that we have to of course uh, allay the fears that Uh, yeah. some countries may have on the integrity i mean the sovereignty of the country uh, security implications so we are doing that and of course uh, we are working uh, closely with other agencies involved and in my capacity as the foreign secretary when i talk with the ambassadors on the heads of mission we do talk about it and we say i mean the best way uh, if there are concerns the best way to uh, uh, allay this those fears is by being part of it mm. but if you say oh this is a chinese project i initially said i don't uh, agree this is a chinese project but if uh, they, if if you say uh, this is a chinese project now therefore we will not come and invest well they will be the loser so i think the best is that uh, we need to promote it because as i mentioned this is the future of country yeah. creating at least 200000 jobs 15 billion US dollar investment i think this is right now one of the biggest infrastructure development project in, in the, the indian world. ocean Even in and the it's world. done almost it's almost i mean already done i mean uh, infrastructure has been developed so we now have to make it happen and actually i think the region should look at this as a regional project mm. not necessarily a project for sri lanka only no it is not You know Mahesh would you believe or would you agree with me if i say in the indian ocean we don't have a maritime hub yeah we don't have a financial hub i think uh, t- uh, on friday Pres- uh, prime minister mahinda rajapaksa opened a center for that per yeah. se itself so we we don't have an international financial center now colombo by a stride of the major shipping lanes and equidistance from either side of the indian ocean and being the southern mass of the asian continent is ideally suited for to be the maritime hub to be the financial hub and to be an international financial center uh, before we go in for a uh, break quickly now if you want to convince people you have to convince the people at home that's that that's where you start now we have the south uh, the sark region uh, with seven countries uh, we are talking about india what kind of response are you getting like you just said this could be the hub of south asia and if that is the case we need to pitch it to maldives we need to pitch it to pakistan we need to pitch it to uh, uh, bangladesh all these countries who are in in the region who has a potential 
of actually investing it and they need to understand we're not investing in Sri Lanka per se but we are getting something in return w what's the thinking there no, you are absolutely right every opportunity we get to address these regional forums and we mention the port city and we say please come and invest and most of the speeches delivered by his excellency the president we have included the port city as a pro i mean prospective yeah. venture for the region right so we are promoting and actually right now the responses are very positive but you see now we needed to get our act together right of course now we have a special commission appointed mm -hmm. now they have to enact certain regulations and laws before we actually can go and offer you know right now we have a land we are developing infrastructure but for us to market this land or to invite foreign direct investment into this land you need something concrete to go mm -hmm. by so right now we are in the process of uh, doing that so as i mentioned we work with all the other agencies also and every opportunity we get we talk about it and we state facts and sometimes when we state real facts they say oh is that the case we didn't know about it we thought it was something different so this is the misconceptions uh, it is either by deliberately yeah, yeah, yeah. creating misconception or by ignorance uh, it can be both but i think it is our duty as you said closer home we have to consider i mean convince our own public the sri lankan public because you know yeah. uh, you remember during the debate there were a lot of negative publicity yeah, yeah. about this brilliant project, project for the future yeah, of sri lanka so we have to convince our own people we have to convince the region and we have to consider the beyond region to come and invest so th that is a part of our job as well we are doing it let's take a short commercial break uh, when we return i want to talk uh, talk uh, with the um, foreign secretary with regard to the united states factor how are we getting uh, them on board as well because they are integral part of of this entire conversation despite the fact that we are talking about india uh, like I mentioned before, India is convinced uh, or, or pushed in, in, in a certain way by the United States as well. There's a fight uh, between the United States and China ongoing and they're looking for people and allies in order to side with them. Let's uh, talk about that after the break. You're watching Get Real. I'm in conversation with Admiral Professor Jana Kulabagi, the Foreign Secretary. We'll be right back. with Foreign Secretary Bharat Professor Jana Kondoye. We've been talking about India's concern with regard to the port city. Um, what he said uh, gave you an idea that, you know, Sri Lankans needs to think that this is our project, not, not a Chinese project per se. Uh, Foreign Secretary, United States. No sooner these laws were passed, commissions were passed, um, the U.S. Ambassador here, sent out a tweet saying, you know, there could be money laundering, there could be these nefarious activities that can happen. Everybody has, you know, completely, you know, rained on our parade. And, and, and I don't understand uh, uh, why the Sri Lankan government is not calling on her, uh, violating, uh, you know, making such statement. It's pretty much violating her mandate here as the ambassador. Uh, but I, I don't see that happening uh, anytime. She just, you know, uh, runs her mouth and speaks whatever she wants and forgets like even with when president uh, gota birajpaksa gave the pardoning she forgot that trump did the same thing and yet here accused our president and in completely a violation of our sovereignty but you know that's a different matter but what i'm asking is she she raised a concern saying about money laundering she raised concerns about you know these this could not be this is because the united states has a fight against china they're not okay with china because <coughs> apparently trades and you know imbalances that's happening is not favorable to their position of superpower anymore china is taking over the world this is the truth the ultimate truth now what are y'all doing because if you said earlier on if people have you know doubts about this project about about sri lanka per se they should engage 
and and be part of it. So, what exactly is the conversation like with the Sri Lankan government and and the United States? You know, be part of it. There's opportunities here for you as well. Well, Mahesh, I mean, uh, you're basically talking about the geostrategic situation that we are facing right now. Yeah. So, unfortunately, Sri Lanka is the chessboard. <laughs> the game is being played by other people yeah. using their own characters. And Sri Lanka is also the epicenter of this geostrategic game being played in the Indian Ocean. If you look at the, uh, the spheres of influence of major powers or major players in the Indian Ocean, every sphere, every axis goes across Sri Lanka. Yeah. So this is the reality that we have to live with. So we are drawing this attention. Number one, of course, our location. Number two, of course, our increased economic involvement with China. So this is a fact that we have to live. Uh, but then, I mean, well, one, one should offer alternatives if that is the case, if we are, yeah. they are not happy with us uh, going ahead with uh, the projects uh, being undertaken by Chinese companies. There should be choices to be made. When in the absence of choices, it's very difficult for us to do things. Are we going to be this poor country yeah. uh, uh, forever? Are we going to be this poor until these big powers resolve, resolve their strategic issues? If That's your problem. If you're saying they should give choices, well, the United States can say, we gave you the MCC, you didn't take it. Well, that's, that's, that's a different thing. It is a grant. It's entirely a different thing than a foreign direct investment uh, for a business purpose. So I will not dwell on the MCC because it is the almost a dead yeah. issue. Uh, but there was a grant. Uh, there were certain conditions attached to it. There was a huge debate in the country and the parliament rejected it, people rejected it, so that is period. But it doesn't mean that we uh, should uh, not do anything with America. We should do everything with America because America is uh, a major power in the world. Uh, India is the major power in the region. We have to work very closely with both these powers because that is, I mean, linked to our future as well. But then, of course, no one should tell us that don't do things with China. Mm -hmm. Because China is our main development partner, economic partner. But you ask a question about uh, money laundering and things like that. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to counter the statement uh, here. Uh, but one thing I can say very confidently, the law of the country will prevail in the port city. The law of Sri Lanka will prevail in the port city. Now, I will mention three specific laws in that. Number one, countering Money Laundering Act will be fully implemented, fully effective. Convention on Suppression of Terrorist Financing will be part of that law, fully applicable to this port city. Then also financial transaction reporting, right? These three, countering money laundering, countering terrorist financial uh, financing and Financial Transaction Act. All these things, three acts will be 100% implemented, applicable to the port city as anywhere else in the country. So therefore, there is no room for any money laundering, any terrorist financing. It will be the law of the country. It will be through the law, uh, bank, the central bank and the banking system channeled to the port city. So I don't see any reason uh, to fear that it may happen. But uh, Foreign Secretary, America is not going to let this go. America, the first act they <coughs> did, uh, the Biden administration, as soon as they came into power, was get back into the UNHRC. And the first statement uh, as a government they made was there should be accountability and we should go back and start checking on Sri Lanka. Mm. That was, a, I mean, I don't know uh, whether uh, the President uh, Biden actually uh, spoke with uh, President Gotabe Rajpaks and, and talked about bilateral issues, but uh, to the public, the first statement America <laughs> made yeah. as a collective government, a new government, is that we should go and look at the UNHRC matter, the human rights matter. That's what they did. So uh, initially, in, in lots of the conversations we've been having on, on get real as well 
we be i mean i know you you have to you know be diplomatic <laughs> and <laughs> pretty much walk the tight uh, you know walk a tight rope here but what you need to understand we understand that america is not going to let go of this they will bring so much of problems to us and and stifle this project they will scare a lot of countries who wants to invest here so how are you all addressing this because you can't deny saying there is no issue because america is concerned they want sri lanka to stop uh, doing this nonsense with uh, not nonsense with these projects with china uh, because they want uh, sri lanka to come begging with them uh, how do you address this well I, honestly mahesh i don't think we should look at as that america is trying to stop this uh, uh, prism i mean i don't think we should look it at uh, in that way um i haven't seen any uh, dimash or any uh, strong uh, writing but you are right the human rights issue is being uh, misused uh, abused and exploited in the world uh, especially when a powerful country mm-hmm. wants to target uh, or sanction or uh, punish a small country uh, that is been heavily uh, exploited yes we have to face that but we are determined to do the right thing to face those allegations and to come out uh, of it that's uh, number 1 but then the other thing is i think america or any other country should realize that this is the future of sri lanka right right now our economy is not doing well why isn't you know? this government demanding america uh, you know if by any chance if you're saying you have concerns why don't you start coming and investment we don't see investments from america uh, providing some kind of support the uh, american ambassador here you know from what we see from her is that you know from time to time she tweets about this that you know all the nonsense we don't we don't see her <laughs> coming this this handout thing she does you know going and giving something and taking a picture with uh, you know like he i am giving something to a, a, a poor person or something of that sort but she does that but th- we don't hear we are bringing this kind of investments to sri lanka we are doing this we are doing that that conversation is very limited at this moment so why isn't this government uh, continuously telling america you you your concern come 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 and uh, you know have a look well on the contrary mahesh i am sure very soon we will see some tangible american investment in sri lanka right now some of the negotiations have reached the final stage uh, and i think we are hopeful that are these, these handouts thi- no no handouts these are foreign direct investment handouts is not good for a country yeah not good for a country you should never give the fish but teach them how to catch the <laughs> fish right so i don't think sri lanka is begging for handouts sri lanka is not begging sri lanka is inviting foreign direct investment and very soon i think we will see something on the ground taking place so that is the best way to go i mean if you have suspicion if you have mistrust be part of it exactly and then then you don't then you are there right so nothing can be done uh, behind your back if a, if, a, if a particular company is going to invest in the port city so he that that particular company becomes part of it mm. right so you cannot do anything contrary to or rather without them knowing nothing can be done so i see the best way is multiple investment to come to the country Let's take a short commercial break. I'm in conversation with uh, Foreign Secretary Admiral Professor Janath Khanwalkar. We are talking about the port city selling it to the world, uh, you know, issues that are popping up uh, around that. We'll be right back. You're watching this. Conversation with Foreign Secretary Admiral Professor Jayanand Kolam again with regard to the current foreign uh, relations uh, around the port city, India's concerns, China, the United States. Um, well, one thing you know, since you're here, I, I also want to talk about the other biggest factor, which is COVID, uh, which is uh, impacting uh, you know in, in in a very bad way economically and 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 socially as well. Now, Sri Lanka is pretty much opened at the moment, but then again, we don't know when clusters will start popping up here. and there we talk about this delta variant this variant mm-hmm. that variant uh, you know now uh, recently we saw uh, sri lanka taking a stand to block 
uh, people coming from the Middle East to, to Sri Lanka disembarking here. That was reversed within like two, three days, whereas in Middle East, They've completely, you know, stopped us coming to their country at all. What's going on? Why, why are we accept, expe, accepting uh, people from there, whereas our people can't go there? Well, Mahesh, every country has the right to decide uh, who can come and how they can come to the country because everyone is uh, concerned about this COVID situation. But I think we have lived with this for the last year and a half now. And I think our strategies have been changing from mm -hmm. time to time based on the scientific evidence and based on the progress that we are making. Now, if you take uh, uh, a country like Singapore, they have taken yeah. a very drastic step. Now, they are not even talking about COVID, yeah. right? So that's something that Singapore has done. So we need to be mindful of those kind of extreme uh, measures. Now, Sri Lanka, on the other hand, has been uh, on a very cautious approach. And I think we did brilliantly well in the first wave. Yeah. We brought it down within no time. And even the second wave, we did very well. We contained the COVID infection rates. Death rate was very low. But when it came to the third wave, yes, uh, it was the uh, international trend. Uh, there are certain numbers which has gone up. I mean, the good news is last two weeks, the numbers well, were coming, coming down. The COVID numbers in getting people getting infected is less than the people who are being released after taking treatment uh, for COVID. And the people dying also has gone down. So these are good news. And I think it has something to do with the vaccination mm -hmm. program that uh, Sri Lanka is doing very well. In fact, you know, last Friday we received 1 million doses of Sinopharm vaccine. So part of the success is, I think, the vaccination drive, which is going on very well. And we are hopeful that the many countries have pledged like America has pledged, EU has pledged, Australia, Japan. We hope that it will also translate to real deliveries. Uh, there are pledges right now. So I think when we uh, can vaccinate at least maybe 45, 50% of our population, uh, things can be very different. So we need to be mindful of the world only. Uh, I mean, getting your act uh, correct mm. is one thing, but the rest of the world also has to really rise together. I mean, this is something the president has been emphasizing uh, regarding the vaccine because the people, I mean, the country which were having lots of money, they ordered the vaccine even in excess quantities and they're not ready to share. Whereas the vaccine should be considered as a global common. It's a medical emergency. So I, I'm hopeful that things will get better soon and gradually we, actually our country was never virtually close. I mean, it was not 100% close. Yeah. Never. We had kept uh, certain channels open. So let's hope that things will get better. So there is a, a, a bigger chunk of uh, uh, people uh, in, in this country who work abroad. And still there are a lot of people who wants to come uh, into the country. When, right. when can normal travel uh, resume? Well, Mahesh, as of now, there are some travel restrictions uh, from South American region, South Africa, and also Vietnam, and also up to a certain level, India. But last Friday, we started bringing our stranded people from India, students, uh, military officers, diplomats, and some people who had gone there to receive treatment. So gradually, we are opening up, and as of now, I can say no stranded Sri Lankans, mm. except in India, a little more number. But by the end of this week, that would be also sorted out. So people are coming back. I mean, they are coming for their summer vacation and they are going back, but the numbers have reduced. Uh, it is not like the normal time where you can just book a ticket and go. Well, that, that's uh, the next question that I wanted to ask you now. Certain uh, um, there is a pro process in place where if you want to come back to Sri Lanka, apparently there should be approval sought from you, from the foreign ministry. You need to talk to the uh, the embassy, the Sri Lankan embassy in that particular country. Uh, what's the process? Can you take a ticket to Sri Lanka and uh, well, fly in? Well, Mahesh, for Sri Lankans, they don't have to take any approval now. Now they can book a ticket and they can uh, opt to go for the government quarantine or hotel quarantine. So they are free to come. Unless there is a travel restriction, they are free to come. They don't Even have to. Even from countries uh, that you uh, No, the countries limit. that I mentioned which are having travel restrictions, yes, we have to regulate that. But other than that, 
you don't no one has to go to the embassy or no one has to register in the embassy to come to sri lanka they are coming these are for sri lankans this is for sri lankans but you know in order to regulate the foreigners coming we still have that process where they take uh, approval from the ministry of foreign ministry as well as the civil aviation authority because we really want to regulate the number and we are having this bubble concept mm. for investors sports personnel uh, they are and the uh, experts Uh, so they are coming in a bubble concept they attend to their work and go back so i think things are getting much better now well i hope uh, <laughs> good times ahead <laughs> that's this thing uh, finally i want to ask you uh, about uh, going back into uh, the port city uh, project and all those things around now what exactly you have uh, the message that you have for mm-hmm. the people of sri lanka to the world as the foreign secretary you know w- what exactly is the message of this government right now i think we have a great opportunity uh, to create something very unique for the region which is something very futuristic a smart city with lot of artificial intelligence big data mm-hmm. cloud computing the technology coming into the country in a big way uh, i i was told it's about 15 billion us dollar investment when it is completed so we have a great opportunity to make use of this facility for the progress of our country you know we are good at uh, agriculture we are good at we are not very good at exporting yet uh, i mean we were import dependent country we are gradually shifting but it takes time right now tourism is a uh, uh, is a big worry at the moment uh, it may pick up when things are normalized but still these are these measures are not enough to take the country out of the situation that we are in so we need drastic changes we need to go up in the ease of doing business so that is why this port city mm-hmm. was created it is considered as a offshore facility and the dealing there will be in foreign currency and but still within the laws of the country but it will be governed by the port city commission so this is a very futuristic aspiration for the younger people i mean who are aspiring to venture outside their own comfort zone and bring prosperity to the country Foreign Secretary Admiral Professor Janath Kolumbia thank you very much uh, for once again coming and uh, having a discussion with us with regard to this issue I hope um, India actually gets the point <laughs> and there's nothing for them to worry about once again thank you very much well that's all the time we have for you tonight and uh, thank you very much for watching I'll see you next time again right here on Get Real make sure you uh, stay positive and test negative I'll see you next time good night